PlayStation 5. There's not much to say right now that you probably don't already know about PlayStation 5. Most of you guys saw the reveal event that unfortunately I was unable to stream uh, this time around. And most of you have seen some of the news that's run up since then. And I'm a Nintendo guy. I got, I got my Mario shirt on, all that jazz. You guys know the drill around here. This is Nintendo Prime. But we do talk about other things besides Nintendo. And the new generation of systems coming out, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, are among those things that I want to talk about. And I want to cover some of their games as well. And I think this is one thing I need to give Sony the absolute utmost credit for. E3 this year was canceled. Um, Sony has not been there, wasn't planning to be there this year, was not there last year. But they ended up doing their PlayStation 5 reveal event. And I'm, I'm air quoting this because they kind of unveiled the specs, I guess, uh, earlier. Um, but they unveiled the system in a way that traditional systems would be unveiled during a time period when E3 was supposed to be taking place before it was canceled. And Sony wasn't even going to be there. And yet they dropped the most E3 of E3-like digital events. Trailer after trailer after trailer of new games, mostly new games, besides the Grand Theft Auto stuff, and even the GTA 5 stuff was like new content. So they dropped a whole bunch of info on new games, new trailers, all this jazz, and then they gave us the system. So first, let's talk about the primary reason we even play like on these systems. Why do we care about PlayStation 5 or the Series X or even a Nintendo Switch? It's about things like the games. Now, I mean, this isn't the greatest example, multi-platform, but you get the gist of it. Like, we care about the games. And uh, I, if you're into Sony games, if you're into what they've done over the years, you know, you go to Tsushima coming out, obviously The Last of Us, we Last of Us Part 2 on its way. Um, you know, they, they, they showed off a lot of games. And they're very, very Sony-like games, including like Project Athos or whatever it's called that's coming, uh, I believe, exclusively from Square Enix. Um, it, they're, they're very Sony-like games. Uh, Sackboy was obviously kind of the uh, breath of fresh air in there, you know, taking a, a twist off from Little Big Planet uh, that I feel like was probably desperately needed at this point. Not that Little Big Planet is a bad series, but it's nice to see a, a different take almost uh, 3D-esque Mario take, uh, which I think is great for Sony to do that. Uh, I think they desperately are short on franchises like that. Uh, but everything they showed looked great. It looked fantastic. I mean, maybe the most impressive showing was probably Ratchet & Clank because Ratchet & Clank, despite some of uh, during the live stream, you know, there was some degradation, uh, but you can now see, you know, much clearer in post clips um, that you got to see what that SSD can do because... The big thing with the PlayStation 5 is it is essentially less than the Xbox Series X in almost every single way until you get to the speed of the SSD. It has a sustained 5 gigabytes or 5.5 or something like that per second of read slash write speed. And this basically allows them to seamlessly um, bring in uh, all these worlds together without, without much loading time. On uh, the Ratchet & Clank trailer, uh, which definitely looked like pure gameplay, uh, showed it off the best in terms of seamlessly loading a billion things at once as they're going through worlds and all that. Uh, it was it was a really fantastic display of what that SSD can do that while some of that will be able to be done by the standard M.2 SSD, which is also particularly fast, can reach up to 6 gigs but not sustained uh, on the Xbox Series X. Uh, again, the exclusive games on Sony are just going to be a little bit more seamless than some of the exclusive games on the Xbox Series X in terms of loading things in. That's just an advantage that basically Sony has because of the way the controller works. It's not really the SSD itself. It's the controller that controls how the data flows. They have a customized controller that's allowing those speeds. Who knows, maybe a revision of the Xbox Series X on the line also includes a similar customized tr controller that lets their M.2 run even faster. I think they're both using PCI Gen 4 SSD. So, you know, th the controller is what's going to be the limiting factor there. And so, who knows? Uh, that's something that Microsoft might improve on in the future. But right now, uh, PlayStation 5 has an advantage there. And I think one thing that, that became clear in this reveal of all the games uh, is that Sony's bringing the goods. They're bringing the goods like they do every single generation. Some of these games are going to come now, like, you know, the, the new Spider-Man games coming out this holiday, for probably a launch game, the big launch game. Um, we know the Halo Infinite's kind of like the Xbox Series X launch game, although it'll still be on the old Xbox. And so it's going to be interesting to see 
how it being a cross-platform game as a launch game is going to affect things. Now, if Breath of the Wild is anything to go for, it's not going to affect anything at all except for in the positive for the Xbox Series X. And most fans, based on some early polls I've seen, do think that Halo Infinite is a bigger launch game than Spider-Man, even though the Spider-Man game sold really, really well last time around on PlayStation uh, 4. And people are kind of curious, that if this is, is this even like Spider-Man 2? Is this a new one? Or is this just a really big expanse of DLC pack that they're going to release as a standalone? Think like for Nintendo fans, think like the new Luigi U stuff that they did on Wii U, where you could like it's like an add-on DLC for Super you know New Super Mario Brothers U, but you could buy it standalone physically and just play that and not play the other uh, the other rest of the stuff you have to get in the original game. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But obviously, a lot of people feel like Halo Infinite's a bigger game, uh, but. That aside, I mean, Halo is like the franchise, like for you know Microsoft, their their flagship. Um, I think that Sony obviously showed off a lot more games, um, and that's ultimately why we play. Uh, do any of these games necessarily justify uh, needing a next gen system uh, in terms of the visuals and all that? In some regards, you could say yes, uh, but a lot of it's going to be in the finer details. And are we going to get full 60 FPS on all these games? Is Horizon Zero Dawn 2 going to be running at a full 60 FPS, you know, at 4K or whatever they're, they're promising for resolution? I don't know. Uh, but I do like what I see in terms of the games. And if nothing else is clear here, the power difference between the Series X and the PlayStation 5 are going to be near imperceivable to most people. Now, there will be some resolution differences. There will be some frame rate differences. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure there'll be a slight bump in resolution at times on uh, on Xbox Series X, and there might be a little bit more stable frame rate uh, in some regards of some multi-platform games. But when it comes to exclusives, they're going to look absolutely stunning on PlayStation 5, and they're going to look absolutely stunning on Xbox Series X. And yes, PlayStation 5 is the one touting the actual true exclusives, where they're not going to do as many of the games also running on PlayStation 4 Pro, whereas Microsoft's going to allow them to make them for the old Xbox and the new Xbox uh, for like the next two years or so, I think just to kind of pump up the value of Game Pass. And we'll get into the Game Pass valuation later because I think it's a fair point of comparison for how these two systems really are going to vary at launch. Um, and it, it's very interesting. Now, there are some things that they did confirm. Uh, PlayStation 5 will be fully backwards compatible or close to fully backwards compatible with most of the PlayStation 4 library. We assume every exclusive PlayStation 4 game that Sony owns the rights to will be able to be played on PlayStation 5 day one. Uh, that I think that's a fair assumption at this point. Uh, but they didn't address things like how are they going to handle um, remasters or, or stuff like that. We know like if you buy one version of a game on Xbox and it's an exclusive for sure, you're going to get the Xbox Series X version as well when you pop that disc into the Series X. You're going to download an update that's going to give you all the better visuals and all that stuff. Uh, they didn't say they were going to do that this time around. So say you buy The Last of Us Part 2 on PlayStation 4, chances are that game will run as is on a PlayStation 5 but are they going to allow an, a free update that's going to give you better visual and performance or are they going to release a last of us part two remastered later and double dip in this like they did this prior generation i don't know uh, but that is something that some people are wondering about since microsoft has been very forefront in saying we are going to allow you to have these games on the system and we're going to allow third parties to do that as well uh which assassin's creed as an example is one such game that you buy it on one system you get the upgraded version on the new system with xbox series x so uh it's it's something that Sony obviously needs to address at some point, uh, but it's not something they're focused on right now. Right now, the games they showed look great, um, and it's to be expected. I don't know how many of them are actually going to come out anytime soon because we tend to Sony tends to tease a lot of games uh, early in console generations that end up not coming out for two or three years, but um, they look good. And there, there's nothing to be, um, I guess, disappointed in, in terms of the quality and the breadth and, and the um, variation of the types of games we're getting out of Sony. I think it all looks good in my book. Now, this gets into the system itself. Now, uh, obviously, very distinct look. This is going to be a console generation. You can't forget the look of the system. Um, it's very unique, very different for Sony. Sony's always gone with like a black slash gray box. Um, and it's been very practical. Um, and yeah, that's basically all you can really say. Microsoft themselves has always kind of used more PC like chassis. And that makes like the Xbox Series X 
make a lot of sense the way that that system is made and the way that it looks. But a PlayStation 5 looks completely distinct. It's taller by all regards uh, than the Xbox Series X, but it's not quite as wide. It can be set on its side, although it looks a little weird on its side. It's clearly meant to stand up vertically, which will give probably some people some issues with some of the current TV stand setups because a lot of TV stands don't necessarily have like really tall uh, shelf space. But um, it looks very, very distinct. And you could tell you know, that they have... Their normal version, what we're calling the normal console with the disc, uh, and then they also have an all digital version, which we assume will probably be like 50 bucks cheaper, more on pricing in a moment. Um, but you could tell that the design of the system was clearly designed for the all digital one, and they kind of slapped the Blu ray player on the other one. Um, I don't know. It looks kind of weird because you can definitely tell the digital one looks more sleek. I'm not sure which one I'm getting at this point. Probably going to end up with the physical one, but I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I It's difficult because all games have to be installed anyways. Um, and there's like 825 gigs, I think, on the internal SSD, although there's an expansion bay. Uh, and that doesn't sound like much, uh, but it's probably more like it's a one terabyte SSD, but you have all that taken away down to 825 for redundancy because SSDs need that kind of space for redundancy. So when you see one terabyte on the Xbox Series X, it might be a true one terabyte of usable space, but it's probably more like a 1.3 terabyte drive with 300 or so megabytes there for redundancy purposes. Uh, plus you have to, you know, minus the space that's used by the operating system uh speaking of the operating system um they didn't talk about it much uh during the show they didn't show anything off about it in particular but apparently the entire ui is completely revamped and redone from playstation 4 to be sleeker with new features and all that uh this is in contrast to the xbox series x which is basically confirmed to use or being confirmed to use uh just the standard uh, Xbox One interface, uh, except it's sleeker, it's faster, and they've added in some of the new features, you know, the switching between games and all that, uh, that wasn't present. And we've seen some of this in action already to kind of get a feel that, yeah, it's going to be familiar. Whereas PlayStation 5 might be very different. Uh, PlayStation over the years has always used the more DVD menu style um, for a long time. You know, if you've ever owned a DVD player or a Blu-ray player, you know the menu style. That's basically what a, what a PlayStation's been forever. I've never been a big fan of it, but it is simplistic and it's familiar. Um, and apparently it's going to be different than that. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, we haven't seen much in it, but we're supposed to apparently hear about it soon. I feel like we're going to hear about everything soon because these systems launch in five months. So there's going to be a lot of information coming out still, uh, beyond that, obviously, uh, you got to talk about the price of the system. There was at one point a leaked price on Play Asia for six ninety nine for the disc version of the system. Uh, that has since been taken down. Uh, I don't know if that was just a placeholder price. I don't know if they just made it up. Nobody knows. Um, Spawn, according to um, John from Spawnwave, he, he has put out there that like, hey, I talked to some people I know. It's a U.S. retail, and they don't even have any clue what the price is going to be people that would know if they knew ahead of time so um i don't know I'll take that for what you will i think most people are anticipating a 499 price point and some of this is supported by sony who uh their one of their head guys has come out now and said hey look we're, we're trying to focus on value with the pricing uh which makes people feel like they want to make the playstation 5 look like it's a good value they did that with playstation 4 granted xbox one helped them with their weird pricing and you know, forcing connect on people made the four, the, the 399 price point feel really valuable at the time. I don't know that we're going to see a difference in price point this time around. I have a feeling that whatever the Xbox Series X is priced at, whatever the PlayStation 5 is priced at, will probably be the same price range. Uh, but I do think that Sony is trying to prepare people for a more expensive generation at launch. Some people think that might mean 599, what they did with the PlayStation 3, but to to reveal that you got to make people so wet in the pants and that they want the system before they reveal the price that the price feels like it's a bargain and granted at 599 you might not even be able to build a comparable pc that could touch a playstation 5 in terms of its performance so in that regard um it still could be a good value but will consumers see that as a value i don't know i think most people are expecting 499 at this point because that's what the xbox uh one x came out at playstation 4 pro those were solid launch prices. Those systems did okay, better for, for Microsoft than Sony. But uh, that could be a price point they're trying to prepare people for. Uh, and then the digital version at, you know, a cool 449 uh, But again, this is just guessing and estimates. And we have no idea. For all we know, these systems are going to be 600 bucks a pop. Um, and for all we know, Microsoft might just say, screw it and uh, put it at 399 because they don't need the money off the sales of the box. They want money off subscriptions. 
uh, and they're just going to undercut and lose money per system massively in order to outsell PlayStation 5, which is something Microsoft is in a very unique position to do because the video game division at Microsoft isn't a big deal in the grander scheme of their whole business. So it'll be interesting to see what's, what's going to happen with the price battle because Microsoft could potentially just undercut everyone besides the Switch. But again, that's obviously a very different um, quote unquote inferior system. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that it's interesting. Now, in terms of the games, I think uh, I saw this on a forum thread somewhere. Someone mentioned like, oh, Sony showed off all these games at launch. That's potentially $480 worth of games that I want to buy. Uh, and by the way, all the games they show won't be at launch. But um, it, it's like, okay, yeah, 480 bucks worth of games. And then someone's like, yeah, or I could spend 10 bucks on Game Pass, get all of uh, the exclusive games plus all future exclusive games, plus they keep adding new and new content. Kingdom Hearts 3 is an example. They just keep adding content to the system to make it more and more valuable uh, to make Game Pass amazing. You know, and if you have 50 million people subscribe to Game Pass versus only 5 million in sales for a game, that 50 million is probably going to outpace uh, the 5 million, especially since there's a monthly fee or a yearly fee associated with that 50 million. So you're going to keep getting money, even if those people aren't playing certain games. Uh, and I think that uh, it's a very different strategy. You can still buy the games individually and all that, but uh, obviously Microsoft is opting to offer a more, I guess, a more consumer friendly way, a more Netflix way of enjoying video games versus Sony, who hasn't announced anything similar to that program yet. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how that goes down. Obviously, Sony right now looks like they have a lot of exclusive games, um, and the system looks looks unique. I mean, can we, can we just talk about the look of the PlayStation 5 for a moment? Some people call it an alien console. I've seen a lot of memes out there. Eye of Sauron, all that stuff. Um, I get it. Uh, it's different. It's very un-Sony-like, uh, but uh, I kind of dig it. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe because I'm so used to, like, Nintendo systems from, like, the lunch pail to like the weird Wii stuff. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, you know, the doggo with the with the Switch. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just used to weird console designs, but I, I kind of like what they're doing with PlayStation 5. Um, and, I, and don't get me wrong, I think Xbox Series X is fine too. It's a standard HTC PC type of, of case, and I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, and supposedly they're listening on the cooling. We've known about that for a while where they're going to make the system not so loud as compared to like PlayStation 4 Pro especially. So we'll see. Um, but I, I'm, I'm ecstatic about PlayStation 5. I'm actually excited for PlayStation 5. Um, it'll be my first Sony console that I plan to actually own at launch. Um, and, you know, who knows? Maybe I'll review some games or something. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it yet besides play MLB The Show. Uh, but I'll figure it out as we go because there's a lot of great games. Um, and I think one major difference that, that I guess kind of goes in Microsoft's favor uh, is that they're, like, almost fully backwards compatible with every generation of Xbox. Like, they are... From the OG Xbox all the way through uh, Xbox One, they are backwards compatible, but not every game, but most of the games, whereas PlayStation 5 only goes back to PlayStation 4 games and only most of those games. Uh, but still, I think that there's a lot to love about PlayStation 5. This isn't me trying to tout Xbox Series X over it. It's way too soon for that. Obviously, um, we could talk about how the systems were unveiled. Um, I think both companies have actually done an excellent job in how they've handled this. I know it's felt like we were waiting forever and we probably should have had this press conference before we had or press conference. See what I'm saying? Like it felt like E3. Um, we should have had this event probably before the GDC event. The GDC event should have happened after in my opinion. Uh, but it is what it is. I, I can't deny that. I think Sony pretty much hit a grand slam in how they uh, handled this digital presentation unveiling the PlayStation 5. Um, we haven't even gotten into the controller. We already knew a bunch about the controller as it was, um, but it's obviously more ergonomic, haptic feedback, all that stuff. Um, you know, it, they're trying to make it feel uh, kind of like the HD Rumble. They're trying to make it um, very uh, feedback like, except even better since obviously you have the feedback in the triggers that we don't have on Switch. So I don't know. Uh, I, I think it looks great. Uh, do I think it's a Switch killer? No. Of course, I don't think no matter what Sony did, it'd be a switch killer because I don't really view PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X as um, the, the more indirect competitors with Switch. They're all competing in the same space but and competing for mind share of gamers, but PlayStation 5 doesn't replace a Switch, so Switch doesn't replace a PlayStation 5 either. So it's kind of one of those things that I think everything can coexist at least for a few years. And then we'll see what Nintendo has coming next. But I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about the PlayStation 5 reveal and everything down below. I know a lot of this is just old information for you guys. But I'm just, uh, I didn't get to talk about it. And so I finally got to talk about it. it. Took me a few days, but whatever. I finally talked about it. 
good to go. We can move on to our next news story and all that. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime. Whew. Catch you guys in the next video.